Hi guys, welcome to a Blender tutorial. I'm going to show you today how to motion track a Lego minifigure head so that you can apply digital faces on top. So first of all, I animated a animation where I put tracking markers on the face of a Lego minifigure. And this is going to be my, this is going to be the footage I'm going to track. All these little black sharpie marker dots are the tracking markers. There must be at least eight in each frame. Well, not in every single frame. They can get covered up. Uh, it's recommended that you keep eight in m as many frames as you can possibly get. It makes for a smoother track. So as you can see, the animation is fairly smooth, which is really good because the smoother the animation, the cleaner your track will be and the easier too. What we need to do is open Blender, change the interface to well, I usually change it to compositing, but you can use motion tracking. I'm going to change this down here, the image viewer, to movie clip editor. Open the clip. Select the movie. There we go. And the clip is now open in Blender. So I'm going to go ahead and play it so we can buffer a few frames. And this is the end of my animation. So 42 frames change the end of 42 in the timeline or up here at the top uh, I'm gonna keep my scale 50% right now change my frame rate to 12 and then go back here we click the objects on the top right panel and if, if the panel is not open press in on your keyboard to open that or the plus right here I'm gonna create a new object call it head then, with that selected, I'm going to make sure I'm in tracking mode down here at the bottom. And I'm going to create tracking markers. To create a tracking marker, click Control and then plus click. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my video. Control, click. And as you'll see, it creates a marker. You can scale it, you know, by pressing S on the keyboard. Move it by pressing G. Rotate it by pressing R, although you probably won't need to rotate it. Once it's on there, we go over here to the track settings on the left, which is in the toolbox. Press T on your keyboard to open that, or the button. And I'm going to click the play button. That will track the selected marker as far as it can get. So, As you can see, it broke fairly quickly. It did a few frames, and then it got off because it was too far of a jump, and it didn't know where the tracking marker went which is common for a tracker, so especially in stop motion animation tracking. So we need to uh, realign this. So go to the frame where it broke, G, and then stick it there. I usually do it for about two frames. Then we go and track again. Whoop, and that <laughs> went crazy. So as you can see, it jumped all over the place. So we won't let that happen. So let's see where to end right there so if it goes all over the place you go to the last frame it was good and this clear button clear from here after so there we go go to the next frame and just carefully guide it to where it needs to be oh and it let's see it works oh and then it got off again so do it again Especially with large movements, you have to uh, manually track them because it loses information. It doesn't know where the tracking marker went. So that's why you want to make sure that your footage is fairly smooth in the first place. And then you see the, the tracking marker went out of screen, so I'm just going to clear that. Go back to the beginning and do another one, just to show you how. So I'm going to select this one up here in the middle. Press play. And it got lost. But overall, I mean, it got most of the, it, you know, it followed the path fairly well. Especially these end, end frames, I had to do all these manually because of the high amount of movement I have in them.
Now, for one that goes out of screen, then back in screen, like this one over here, going to track it till it goes out of screen, which it lost fairly quickly. So let's see. Okay, you just can't see that anymore. There we go. And then we're going to go and let it run until it comes right back in screen. And the first frame it's back in screen. Let's see here. I'm gonna grab it again and click it to where it needs to be. And keep going. Let's see if it can track. And then let's see. And as you wait, yeah, as you see, it went out of frame once again. Okay, so I've tracked three of them, and that didn't take very long. So I'm not going to track all of the dots I have on the face. So I'm just going to skip to another file where I have those already done. So as you can see, I have my tracking markers all set up. What we need to do to make these markers translate into 3D uh, space is solve the object motion. Now, before we do that, we need to set up our camera. On the right hand side in the panel, we click on camera and it's got some presets here. And mine is the Nikon D3100. So I'm going to click that and it sets the sensor width. Then I go into lens and I set how much, how uh, the length of the lens I used. So that's a 68 millimeter lens. Let's see. So once I get the the camera data punched in, we can go over here and solve. The keyframe A and keyframe B in the solve uh, panel are are basically it takes the tracker between the first keyframe and the second keyframe, and it tra it, it examines the movement so it can translate it to 3D space. You want to make sure that you have at least eight of these tracking markers between every one of the frames in these keyframes. So I have that because none of the tracking markers except for a few on the edge get covered up. So one to 30 might work. So let's check. So my solve error was 0.2. 7709 it's it's best to get it under one that's for sure but if you can get it under 0.5 or 0.6 that's even better let's uh, optimize the keyframes so from 1 until 12 it goes in the same direction the head is turning in the same direction so let's set it to 1 to 12 solve that and I get a 0 0.6087 which is much better now that we have the uh, it, the motion solved we go into our 3d view where you set up your digital camera uh, blenders camera so let's add a camera let's reset the rotation alt R and alt G do that then rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis that's what I do pull it back a little We need to set this camera also to the what my camera was. So now this camera is set up, but there's nothing in the 3D space. So we need to reconstruct this head so that we can put a texture on it. I already have a mesh that I've created that looks just like the minifigure face. So I'm going to open the blend file on the append menu. Object, face. It's very small. And that's what it looks like. So we need to apply a texture to that. So go to materials up here. I'm using the blender internal render because I don't need any advanced rendering material at all. So I'm going to create a new material. Set it to shadeless. Turn on transparency. Alpha zero. Go into the texture panel. Create a new texture. Image or movie. Click open find your texture face.png scroll down here 
check the alpha box in the influence. And as you'll see in the materials, it is a transparent background. I'm going to set the shading to GLSL so that I can see. Now that we have our mesh set up, we're going to select the camera, go to constraints, object constraint, camera solver, and as you'll notice, all these little uh, empties get added, but they're not real empties, they're just uh, di uh, they're just part of the camera solver, so you can't move them, they're attached to the camera. And then on the face mesh, here we go, we're going to add an object constraint, object solver, select the object, which is head, and that object, by the way, is the objects from the, the movie clip editor, not mesh objects. Then we're going to select the camera, camera, and as you see, it's gone missing. Click set inverse. And if it doesn't work, clear inverse and set inverse. That works. And so then it's back to where I put it. But I don't want it here anymore. I want it over here on the empties. So, let's see. Let's play that back. You'll see, that you'll, you'll notice the empties are moving along with the face because it's now parented to the empties in a way. So I want to align this face with the empties. So as you see right there on the third frame or on any frame that has rotation, the empties stay straight. So this helps me decide how large the face is because and, and the curve of it. So there we go. Let's move it. I'm not going to rotate it because it's being rotated by the empties. See, it's scaled properly. I can move it up and down, though. There we go. And if you watch it... Now, on that last frame, you notice that the face is uh, going too far in. So I just need to uh, move it out just a little bit. There we go. Let's play it again. And now you have your face uh, overlaid on top of your minifigure. Obviously, you'll probably want to do some masking for the hair. And you'll probably want to add a blend mode to the face so it blends in with the head more. And you also you want to remove these tracking markers. Well, I can't help you with all these things, but I will tell you how to set up your node so you, at least you can render it this way. So in the compositor up here at the top, going to click use nodes and then we're going to add a um, shift a does the add render layers and then we're going to add uh, move clip and we're going to add a new node so we're going to move the top, you can move the top, and we're going to add a new node, so that would be your uh, backdrop, that's in D, or here on the panel, it moves the let's go over here to the render button, we're going to make sure the alpha is set to transparent we're going to add a compositor, a composite node, and then I'm going to render out the 3D face. It, it overlaid it on top of that, so we need to use alpha button on the, on the mix node. And now you see that the image is overlaid on the dots. Now here's a really quick remo uh, dot removal. It's kind of rough, and I, don't, I haven't found a better way yet. You need to go back to your movie clip editor going to go down here at the bottom where it says tracking click it and select mask as you can see I've already have a lot of masks set up I'm gonna go ahead and set one up for you on camera I'm gonna select the tracker going to control click and this will create a mask I'm going to create a simple mask right around the dots Alt C to make the circle enclosed And then I'm going to Alt Scale, Alt S, I mean, and that creates a feather. And then I'm going to click Control. Well, with, with this selected, I pressed L while hovering over it to select it. Control P will parent it to the uh, tracking point. So back in the compositor, we add the set alpha. We can just wait. Gonna set alpha on 
We're going to actually add a mask node first. Going to select the mask we have. Put the mask into the alpha and put the image into the color. And as you'll see in the viewer, this will create only the dots. Here we go. Now I'm going to use an um, in paint node. I'm going to invert before the in paint, invert alpha. So then I'm going to use the in paint and go up. And basically, what it's doing is just stretching the yellow uh, color. As you can see, it did not turn out very well. And I, like I said, I don't recommend it. I'm sure there's a better way of doing it, maybe in Photoshop or GIMP or using another program. I'm still researching it. But for my uh, tests, just to make sure that it's tracking well without the markers getting all in the way. It seems to do the job. So then we're going to use the end of this in paint and plug it into the mix. And there we go. So rendered out, it looks like the video on your screen. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to put it in the comments below and I'll try to reply. And I hope this helped you, and thanks for watching.